Good morning. We're uh, welcomed here today at St. Julia Parish to celebrate our Advent Mass. Hope, peace, joy, and love are powerful, affirming words that adorn the Advent candles. Advent is a time that we prepare and we celebrate the arrival of Jesus. The light from the Advent candles, which grows brighter each Sunday, reminds us that Jesus is the light of the world and the good news. For God so loved the world that he gave his only, one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Hope, peace, joy, and love reflect the good news in Jesus' ministry with us. And they are words for all of us to live by. Jesus' arrival is near. Let us rejoice and let us be glad. We welcome Father Greg today, who will be our celebrant for Advent Mass. We'd ask everyone to please stand for the opening hymn. Begin this morning with the sign of our faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. To echo Mr. Timmons' welcome, I warmly welcome you to our parish of St. Julia. These are important times in our year that we stop and pause, gathering around this altar, bringing all of our prayers and petitions of thanksgiving, but also those petitions that of help and assistance that we need from our God. And during the season of Advent, we do so, guided by the candles that are on this Advent wreath. They are a reminder of us of what, we are, of what we are striving for as followers of Christ. So again, welcome this morning. My friends, so that we may enter into these sacred mysteries, let us now call to mind our sins, asking for God's pardon and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the coming solemnity of your Son may bestow healing upon us in this present life and bring us the rewards of eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. I invite everyone to be seated for our first reading. A reading from the prophet of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make well and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. Shower, O heavens, from above, and let the skies rain down righteousness. Let the earth open, that salvation may spring up, and let it cause righteousness to sprout, sprout up also. I, the Lord, have created it. For thus, thus says the Lord, who created the heavens, he is God, who formed the earth and made it. He established it, he did not create it a chaos. He formed it to be inhabited, 
I am the Lord and there is no other. There is no other God besides me, a righteous God and a savior. There is no one besides me. Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is no other. By myself I have sworn, from my mouth has gone forth in righteousness, a word that shall not return. To me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Only in the Lord it shall be said of me, a righteousness and strength. All who were increased incensed against him shall come to him and be ashamed. In the Lord all the offspring of Israel shall triumph and glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The disciples of John the Baptist reported to him all that Jesus was doing. So John summoned two of his disciples and sent them to the Lord to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? When the men had come to Jesus, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to ask you, Are you the one who is to come? Or are we to wait for another? Jesus had just then cured many people of diseases, plagues, and evil spirits, and had given sight to many who were blind. And Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, 
the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have good news brought to them, and blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And I invite everyone to be seated. I have a question for you. What is your greatest desire? What is your greatest desire? At this moment in time, it may just simply be to get through the next week and a half and begin your Christmas break. For others, it might be getting those final papers or projects done so that you can have a good, peaceful time off during that break. Maybe for some of you, it might be a relationship that is your greatest desire or something within your family. It might be thinking about getting your driver's license or thinking about that next step on your journey, where you'll be in um, fall of 2023, and those deep desires that maybe you're thinking about, you're pondering about. Maybe it has something to do with a family health, maybe your own health, or someone within your family or community. These desires are something very, very important, and they're something that God is very, very interested in. And I think in our gospel today, if we think about those miracles that Jesus performed, those were probably the greatest desires of those that received that healing, that they were able to see, able to hear, able to walk. But I think there's something more that the season of Advent presents to us. Because we think about our journey that we've been on together, not only during these past few weeks, during the season of Advent, but even if we think on a grander scale, we think that for the past 14 plus years, each and every year, we've been lighting these candles on the Advent wreath. And we go through the motions of going through and lighting the candles of hope, peace, joy, and love. And here we are, we're doing it again. But I ask us the question again, what is your deepest desire? Or maybe if I flip that question around and ask something even deeper, this might be the question. What is God's deepest desire for us? What is God's deepest desire for you? This just might change the way you look at the opportunity for us to come together for the celebration of the Mass, or even go a little bit deeper to think about the bigger picture. Because I think what God is asking us is asking, what is our deepest desire, but asking us to go deeper and ask ourselves the question, what is God's deepest desire for us? And as I just said, we light all these candles, and what does this mean, and how do we put it into real life, into our everyday actions? God has created each and every one of us, in and out of love, to come to know him. And what we celebrate in the upcoming celebrations is our greatest opportunity to come to know God through the birth of Jesus Christ. For Jesus Christ is God made flesh, Emmanuel, God is with us. And Jesus gave us the greatest glimpse into the mind of God. And ultimately, each of us were created, whether we're Catholic or not, we've all been created by God in God's image and likeness to come to know him. And Jesus gave us the greatest glimpse into the mind of God for us to be able to have that deep desire to come into a personal relationship with God and with Jesus Christ. Who's going to help us to enter into that relationship and to come to know God? Well, it's our parents and it's our grandparents. We have beautiful grandparents that have helped to journey and probably are those ones that kind of give us that nudge to get us to know God and to love God. But then we have our teachers. We have our chaplain. We have our principals. We have those that are sitting right beside us, that each in our own little way, we're helping one another to come to know God. We have our faith studies here at St. Julia, and everyone is welcome on Tuesdays to come to know God and enter into that personal relationship. That's the greatest desire. And I pray that you have that aha moment where you align your will with the will of God and then have that moment to think, wow, there's something more to life. And that's what I want to desire, to come to know God and to love God. Maybe you've already had that aha moment. Maybe it's something that is coming through those faith studies. Maybe it will happen today. It might happen decades from now. But the sooner we come to that aha moment and come to realize that we're to know God and to love God and to enter into that relationship with God, it comes down to my favorite words. Peace, which I preached about, I think, for the entire homily for my first year, and it's woven into every homily I ever give. But ultimately, the next word is transformation. 
when we come to desire God and to con desire to know God, that's when it has the power to transform our lives. And that's what I pray that I'm going to help you with as well. And during our time together at Dennis Morris Catholic High School, this is our opportunity to have plant those seeds. And I pray to have that aha moment. The aha moment might come down the road when you might be holding your first child and thinking, my goodness, how can this be? That's an aha moment to think, wow, I am responsible for another being. That's years from now. But it can happen much sooner that you have that aha moment to think, wow, there's something more to life and to come to know God. And I'm here to help you. I'll say it again and again. We're all here to help one another. That person sitting beside you in the pew today is here to help you. When we begin to align our will with the will of God and come to desire what God wants for each and every one of us, that's when my favorite candle comes into play, peace. This is where if we can work towards peace because it's God who sent his son Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, to dwell with us, that's when the greatest desires can be fulfilled because this is what God wants for each and every one of us, peace, love, hope, and joy. But again, going back to peace, I was with our kindergartens at St. Peter's School yesterday, and I was talking to them, and we had a beautiful conversation. If we have peace at home, that's a tremendous, tremendous gift. And if we leave our home with a sense of peace in our spirits, in our very depths of our souls, we bring that into our classrooms. If we're leaving a home where there's a lack of peace, we bring that to our classroom. It's the same with our parents. If we're leaving home where we've already had to have our voices or whatever the case may be, your parents are bringing that into their place of work, and that sets the tone, and it, uh, it goes throughout the entire workplace in the school as well. If we leave with a sense of peace, we bring that into our school, into our place of work, and then out into our world. And nobody's going to deny that our world needs peace. It's Jesus Christ who came to bring that message, one of the candles on our Advent wreath. That's what God desires for us, peace. Everything else, God is very, very interested in, in our lives. But ultimately, it comes down to working towards peace, loving our neighbor, being people of joy, and placing our hope and trust in God. I pray that you have that moment where you come to that realization that when we enter into that relationship with God and Jesus Christ, who is, has come already 2,022 years ago, this is when we come to realize that there's something more and we can be instruments of change and experience that transformation in our lives. And that's what I want for all of us. So as we continue our Mass this morning, may we be mindful of the great gift that we have in expressing our faith in coming together. And as we continue to light those candles, may we be mindful of the desire that God has for each and every one of us. I pray that that's the same desire in your heart and that you'll experience that transformation in your life. May God bless. I invite everyone to stand as we offer our prayers and petitions. As we continue our preparations for the celebration of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, we come with our prayers and petitions to the Father who has so generously bestowed his only Son to us. Our response will be, Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. We pray for the church carrying the message of Christ's love, peace, and hope to all corners of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. We pray for those who are discouraged and disillusioned by life's struggles, especially at Christmas time. Let us pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. We pray for those who are dis oh, sorry. Um, we pray for the needs of the poor and hungry in our own community. May those in our community who are struggling financially, may they come to know the hope, peace, joy, and love of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. We pray for spiritual growth for our Dennis Morris School community during this Advent and Christmas season. May we take the time to acknowledge and give praise to our Lord Jesus, the one true light and reason for the season. Let us pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. We pray for the sick, especially those near death, May they feel God's compassion in the loving hand of their caregivers. We pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. We pray for our friends and family members who have died. We pray for those who mourn the loss of loved ones during this Christmas season. May they find comfort and consolation in the Christ child born into our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. 
We pause now and pray for the special intentions held within our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus, ever-loving and generous Father, we ask that you hear these prayers as we celebrate with joy your everlasting love for us. We make all these prayers through Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. And I invite everyone to be seated. I invite everyone to stand. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplished for us your saving work. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope and so with angels and archangels with thrones and dominions and with all the hosts and powers of heaven we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim holy 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 lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And I invite everyone to kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection 
until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we would be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Gerard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. And at this Mass, we pray in a special way for the repose of the soul of Regina Rogel. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, St. Julia, and all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Keeping your kneelers down, I invite everyone to stand. Gathering all of our prayers and praises into one, let us now offer the prayer that Christ himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us now think of that someone who needs that peace of Christ in their heart this day. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. And I invite everyone to kneel. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. reminder at this time of communion, everyone is welcome to come forward. For those of us who are Catholic, receive as you normally would. For those of you who are not Catholic, we welcome you to come forward for a blessing. Simply place your arms over your heart like this, and we will be pleased to extend to you that blessing.
invite everyone to stand. And let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and 
and prepare us for the coming feast. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much for joining me for the celebration of the Mass this morning. I say it at every Mass as well. Next to peace and transformation, invitation. And I want you to know that you and your families are warmly welcome to join us here at St. Julia for our Christmas celebrations. We'll be sending out the Mass times um, uh, to all of you, but we celebrate Mass here on Christmas Eve at 5 p.m., 8 p.m., and 10 p.m., and then Christmas Day at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. We have a nice large worship space, space, and it would be my honor to welcome you all with your families to join and celebrate. We have two tremendously big celebrations in the life of the church that really define who we are as disciples of Christ, that being the birth of Christ and the resurrection of Christ. So do consider joining me for the celebration of the Mass. It might be one of those transformative moments in your life where you have that aha moment, and I want that for us all and each of your families. So until then, I wish you all a beautiful and blessed remainder of the season of Advent. My friends, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless each of you and those that you love, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Glow.